Hey guys, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. It's your boy, it's Harold Dillon Jr., Internet Guy from Investment Group Partners. We're back at the 7.30 drop. It's the 7.30 drop. It's another Thanksgiving Thursday. To God be the glory. Hey man, good morning, good morning, good morning to you, 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 and you. Man, let me tell you something. The world is starting to see the manifestation of what God is talking about. He promised us seven years of prosperity. Hear me out, guys. Seven years of prosperity with every active movement, there's a repeated pattern. And so God is repeating some things in the lives of us for our dispensation. So seven years of preparation, seven years of wisdom, seven years of getting you ready, seven years of positioning you so that you know what to do at the end of the seven years. The end of the seven years becomes a new beginning. That eighth year, the number eight means new beginnings, but there's a preparation period. God would not show us a revelation if there was no preparation. So so right now, I need you to get ready. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Listen, the uh, the Japanese stock market is called the, uh, the Nikkei Average. Nikkei Average. For the first time in, in 24, 30 years, it hit 39,000. For the first time, the Dow Jones hit what? It touched 39,000. They're running neck and neck. The, the, the NASDAQ today woke up to 400 400 points. You understand me? 400 points. It was trading up 400 points or 2% or 2%. Listen, guys, and it's still rolling. They don't have answers for things that they thought was going to go on. Who are they? The economists, the analysts, the stock professionals, the ones that say that we're doing this, but they don't know why. It's because God has blessed us. God is opening up a door of opportunity. The Lord says in his word, when he reigns on the just, he reigns on the unjust. So he's blessing every Everything around the seven years of prosperity. Hallelujah. Seven years of prosperity. So we're telling you to get yourself prepared. What we're doing now is teaching biblically based principles on stewardship because a lot of us need to get comfortable in the uncomfortable. We're not going to be used to having this type of money because of the curse of poverty that's on many of our lives. We have to break that curse. And so God is opening up a door. He's telling us in his word, precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little. This is how we get understanding. And today I need you to have understanding. The 730 Drop, guys, is brought to you by Investment Group Partners with a parent association over Community Investment Club. Community Investment Club is an online community of retail uh, investors. Our job is to teach you how to be better stewards, stewards of God's time. 24 hours in a day, what are you doing with his time? A better steward of God's money. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, and a, and a steward of God's word. Glory be unto your name, God. This is your, your time, your ability to walk in the newness that God is giving you. Every single day, he wakes you up for one reason. Whether you do it or not, that reason is to finish the work. We all have been called and chosen to do a work. That work could be to be a parent. Maybe you're a mom or a dad. That work could be to be a son or, or a daughter. That work could be to be a teacher or a plumber. He places us in a position of purpose that we may reach the people who, who, are, who, are, who are driven into our lives or, or coming into our life based on how we live. So if you're living ratchet, you're going to draw ratchet people. Y'all better talk to me. If you're living holy, you're going to draw people that want to be holy. And you have the opportunity based on your position of purpose to teach them what you know about Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hey, guys, this is the 730 drop every Thanksgiving Thursday. We're in day 53 of Christian financial wellness. Every day God gives us a word. That rhema word is, 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 is designed for us. It's designed for us to, to receive the word. It's designed for us to learn the word. It's designed for us to implement the word into our daily activities. Today's word is walking in your authority. Y'all better talk to me. Hallelujah. Walking in your authority. Know your calling. The season of the anointing. Day 53, Thanksgiving Thursday. You have been commissioned by Jesus to walk in your spiritual authority. Luke 10, 19. Behold, I've given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all power of the enemy and nothing shall hurt you. Life is a battle that can make you feel powerless at times because of the things you cannot control. When situations don't go your way and you're, you uh, encounter issues and you don't know how to resolve, it can make you feel weak, vulnerable, small, and capable and without hope. 
That's what life does. And every time you, if you've ever followed us online, whether it's Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube, doesn't matter. You'll hear me say life happens. But you have to learn how to manage the happenings in life as they're happening to you. All about management. We're stewards of God. Glory be unto your name. When he started this thing, he started with Adam and Eve and told them, hey, you, Adam, name all the animals. Manage this for me. But we're bad managers. Not only managing our personal stuff, that's why he wants to get us together. Listen, you're no good to the kingdom till you fix your house. Get your house in order. Do it today. Get your house in order. Do it right away. Scripture tells us what, what good are you to the church if your own house is not in order. And so here's a preparation period God has given us because we've got a work to do. At the end of the seven years is the eighth year. And eight means new beginnings. What means there's a famine coming on the land. Hear me out, good people. This preparation period is designed for you to learn how to operate with new money, how to operate in a new position, how to operate, manage, and maintain the framework of your family's financial future. Everybody in the body of Christ has a calling. Mine is to teach you how to establish, manage, and maintain the framework of your family's financial future. Investment Group Partners is the parent association. Community Investment Club is nothing but the resource. It's the community where you go and you learn from us on what to do next. On what to do next. Doesn't matter what you do. It's the principles of God that we're teaching pertaining to stewardship. Everyday activities. What can I do, Lord, to be better? What can I say, Lord, to impact somebody's life? How can I react and how do I fit into your plan? These are the questions we're asking. Because today God woke you up to do what? Finish the work. Today's word is walking in your authority. Know your calling. Mark 3, 14 and 15. He appointed the 12 whom he named apostles. He wanted them to be continually at his side as his friends. And so that he could send them out to preach and have authority to heal the sick and to cast out demons. That's a different translation, an easy to read translation, because some of the people that's on our lives, some people that watch us on LinkedIn, some people that's following us on, on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, they're not saved. And so I want to give you a better understanding of the principles of God. People will listen to a proverb because the world tells them proverbs and people use proverbs out of scripture throughout history. If you look in the almanac, you'll see it throughout history, proverbs that God gave uh, to, 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 to uh, the, the, the king of glory be unto your name. Solomon to King Solomon and those Proverbs were written for better understanding so that we can face life. Remember life happens. It happens every single day. But you as an individual called as you, you as a blood washed believer, you have to learn how to manage the happenings in life as they're happening to you. This is the 730 drop. My name is Harold Dillon, Jr. Internet guy. We're going to be talking about the individual stocks that we actually manage for our portfolios. Guys, one of the things that we decided to do was invest in the stock market. And because we do it in the stock market and we do it together, that's called group portfolio club investing. When we do it together, we create a buying platform that's greater than an individual would have trying to do this on their own. When we do that as a group, it reduces the risk and it eliminates that opportunity to lose at a greater loss, excuse me, opportunity, at a greater percentage than you would do as a group, as an individual. An individual, you can lose a lot because you're investing a lot. But when you do it as a group, you invest little. We all eat from the same group, but we create a buying platform that's greater than an individual would have. So for instance, we look at different individual stocks. We don't do all the fancy stuff. All we do is look at stocks. And for our group, we look at different stocks individually that have a potential of producing a profit for the day. We do this day by day. Part of God's strategy, even pertaining to us, regardless of what you decide to do, regardless of your position of purpose, even pertaining to us, the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. This is that one day, that one day, you deal with your right now, that one day, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Take no need for tomorrow. That one day, I want you to focus on today, take no need for tomorrow, because tomorrow will take care of itself. There's enough evil in today. So God needs you to deal with today. He woke you up today to finish the work. Follow the guidelines. These are nothing but principles you have to enter your life. When I wake up in the morning, I'm going to seek God. 
and I'm going to seek his righteousness. So I don't worry about the little things that the world tells us to worry about. Don't get caught up in the world things. Here's what God told you to do. Get up in the morning. You have 24 hours in a day. Give him glory. Hallelujah. Give him praise. That's what he's requesting from you. Give him praise. And then you spend some time with him. For me, so I can make certain I'm a good steward of God's time, I, my day starts at 1.30. By 2.30, I'm in prayer. By 3.30, I'm in the word. By 4.30, I'm sharing the word. So at least I know I spent two hours and 40 minutes with the Lord, sometimes longer, but never shorter. That's my 10%. I'm tithing my time. Y'all better talk to me. See, see. so you think you're a good steward because you're tithing to the church. You think you're just a good steward because I'm paying my my, my, uh, my benevolence offering or I'm giving an offering. There's more to that. You got to be a better steward of God's time. Some of you get up and waste your time. You waste your time complaining. You waste your time gossiping. You waste your time not knowing what to do next. But if you would wake up under God's strategy, Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. That is the first step in the morning. Watch this. If you get up in the morning, you start seeking God. You start praying and praising God. Here's what scripture says. Watch what scripture says. Scripture says he will inhabit. That means he's coming down. He will inhabit the praises of his people. So I get up in the morning and I'm seeking God based on Matthew 6, 33 and 34. Seeking him and his righteousness. So I'm not worried about what to, where to live, what to eat, what to worry about. I ain't worried about the electric bill. I ain't worried about the kids because I'm enjoying the Lord. While I'm enjoying the Lord because I'm praising him, giving him what he desires from me, he inhabits the praises of my people. So now the anointing is on me. Y'all better talk to me. So by the time I get finished praising God, I done tied my time. I'm two hours and 30 minutes. Minutes, two hours and 40 minutes. I'm three hours into giving God some glory. I'm wide awake. I woke up and I'm excited about the Lord. I ain't worried about nothing but God. So when things do happen, guess what? I'm already combating them. I'm already fighting them because the battle that we fight every day, the battle that we fight every day. Let me go to the word. Hey guys, you're just now joining us. My name is Harold Elam Jr., the internet guy from Investment Group Partners. I'm enthusiastic and excited. Why? Because the Bible tells me this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice. Hallelujah. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Y'all better talk to me. This is the 730 drop. We come to you every Thanksgiving Thursday to bring you the word of God, to show you how to implement God's word into your everyday activities. We are uh, Investment Group Partners. That's who we are. My name is Harold Elam Jr. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Investment Group Partners. We're the parent association over Community Investment Club. If you're watching me right now, live, 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 that means, guess what? That you are a member of the club. You could be one of the three members that we allow. Here they are. Self-investing member. I already got my brokerage account. I, I, I share ideologies. I share my the results of my due diligence. I know how to trade. Maybe I'm a day trader. I'm speaking for somebody else. Uh, maybe I'm a swing trader. Maybe I do options and puts and calls. Whatever I do, I'm a self-investing member. The next one is a learn as you earn member. Oh, I want to learn how to do this. Okay, great. There are six steps to getting started. You want to learn how to, how to do what we do? You want to learn how to implement God's principles on stewardship into your daily activity? First thing you need to do when you come to the lesson, bring an ink pen. This is for our learn as you earn members. You need an ink pen. Second thing you want to do is bring your word. So you got your pen, you got your word. Third thing you want to do, you want to bring your journal. So here's our pack. I got my journal, I got my word, and I got my pen. Because I'm going to give you word that you can go back and study. The Bible says prove all things. So when I tell you something, you got to go study it for yourself. You can't believe everything that I say. I want you to verify it. I want you to verify because this ain't about me. This ain't about me. This is about the word of God. You implementing the word of God into your daily activity so you can change the end result expectations that God would have for you. And we're talking about finance. And I'm not your pastor. Y'all better not. Don't get it twisted. My job in the body of Christ is to teach one, reach one, bring one along. I am the, the thumb. Call me the thumb because Bible says every part of the body is needed. Well, this thumb is supposed to put the handprint so you can be a better steward. Steward, do you understand me? A steward is a manager of something entrusted to them. That's the short definition. 
So that's our learn as you earn members. Then the third member is an active investing member. An active investing member or AIM, AIM, A-I-M, is that person that participates in group portfolio club investing. Group portfolio club investing is our version of crowdfunding. It's where a group of us come together. We're considered by the SEC to be a 3C1, where we have no more than 100 benefacting members of each of our clubs. We have 11 different clubs that we oversee and manage. Each club has their own stability. Each club has their own end result expectations. Each club has their own strategies and overall goals set for them. But these are clubs that you can join. Each club has a minimum member contribution that you can make and a maximum member contribution that you can make. The clubs are all managed by investment group partners. We have a team called a collaboration partners. We get together every day that the markets are open and we look at the individual stocks that we buy. Now we look at the market differently because each of us are in a different focus of the market. We're all traders. We're professional traders. We are not financial advisors. Let me get the legal stuff out the way. We are not financial advisors. We can tell you what we do so you can follow our trades. We can tell you what we're going to do as club members or you can follow our trades. But we are not financial advisors. I'm a professional trader and the team that I work with are professional traders. Each of us go in and we look at the individual stocks. We buy stocks for the individual neighborhood managed group portfolios. Each one of our portfolios can have seven different companies. That's the minimum. And we get that from where? Scripture. We get that from Scripture, Ecclesiastics 11, 1 and 2. It tells us about seven or eight streams of income we are required to have. Some of the things we miss in Scripture, because we're not looking for those things to apply to that particular situation or circumstance in our life. If I want to be a better husband, I find those Scriptures. If I want to be a better wife, I, I wouldn't be a wife, but I'm just giving an example. I, I find those Scriptures. If I want to be a better parent, I find no scriptures. If I want to, uh, my, my prayer life to increase, I find no scriptures. Well, why? When you got more month left than money, don't you find scriptures on finance? Why? When your budget is off point and you behind on your mortgage, don't you find scriptures on how to be a better steward? Why don't you learn how to have more than $500 in the bank? They did a study, a study. The average American don't have $500 in their bank. Bad stewardship. So we go to Ecclesiastes 11, 1 and 2. We're supposed to have seven or eight streams of income. The Bible reads out of the NIV version. This is Solomon, King Solomon, the richest man ever, the Bible says. And he's going to be the wisest man ever, the Bible says. I believe the word of God. It's the infallible word of God. I believe everything from start to finish, every precept, every line to be true. So watch this. Ecclesiastics, ship your grain across the sea. After many days, you might receive a return. In this first part of the scripture, we're in Ecclesiastics 11, 1 and 2. The first part tells me you're moving a monetary or a grain, a commodity. Grain is a commodity, means it has value. Even in Solomon days, grain was a commodity. In Harold's days, grain is a commodity. The Bible says ship your grain across the sea, which means you're going to send it out. You're going to send it out after many days, after a period of time, God's telling us you might receive a return. There's the risk factor. You might receive a return. That's the risk factor. And it says because of this risk factor, because you're shipping your grain, that that's your commodity, that's your value, that's your monetary value across the sea. He said invest. I'm in verse two. It says it in the NIV version of Ecclesiastes 11, one and two, invest in seven ventures. Yes, in eight, you do not know what disaster may come upon the land. So the reason God's telling us to have seven or eight streams of income, because we don't know what disaster may come upon the land. Was you ready when COVID hit? Did you have seven or eight streams of income when they sent you home and tell you to get unemployment? Now, I don't know about you guys, but I was used to a certain amount of income. Then at the when, when unemployment hit, I was in the car business. I was like, what? We were in a business that was supposed to be recession proof. Everybody else went through time and time. 2008, we still selling cars. 2009, we still selling. Didn't matter. Whatever hit, we were still selling. When COVID hit, we couldn't sell. So anything that I got used to over the 25 years of being in the car business, it was gone. So now the, the state of Nevada said, we'll give you $400 for unemployment. What? And then the government at the time, President Trump said, we'll give you $600. What? So wait a minute, 
Because the math didn't add up. I'm not a genius, but I know math. I know one plus one equal two. I'm making $25,000 a year on average for the last 25 years. You know, my lifestyle is built around my income. So now they're going to tell me I'm going to make $21,000 less. Hallelujah. Twenty-one. Th- I had to learn how to, I had to get comfortable in the uncomfortable. Y'all ain't talking to me. I went from making $25,000 a month to making a th- $4,000 a month. Oh, wow. What do we do? What do we do? This is why when, this is why even on the other day, when you've got nobody but God, then you have to depend on God. And a lot of times God will place us in a position of purpose and put us in an uncomfortable position. And he tells us, teaches us, and prepares us to get comfortable in the uncomfortable. And so even in 2000, in 2020, I had to get comfortable in the uncomfortable. The uncomfortable was having a lifestyle of $25,000 a month, but I only got $4,000 a month. How do I do the extra, Lord? What happens then? And that's when God began to tell me, you were not prepared for the disaster. Because you don't know. This is why he prepares us. He told the virgins, go get your bottles. Go get your bottles. I know ain't nothing happening yet, but go get your bottles. Because you can't put new wine in old bottles. He's telling you right now, go get prepared. My job is to help you out for preparation. Preparation in your finances. Preparation on how to be a better manager. Guys, listen, if you want to give your life to Christ right now, we'll stop. Because at the end of the day, what I do for the Lord, the the anointing and the assignment on my life, it's still supposed to win souls for Christ. That's when you know you're operating inside of God's perfect will. If God called you to be a singer, sing, sing all day long. If he's called you to be a prayer warrior, pray all day long. Because whatever you're doing for God, if you're building a tent, selling cars, fixing plumbers, God places us in a position of purpose so that we can can be make a difference in the lives of the people he he sends towards us. Sometimes people are attracted to you, not because you're good looking, not because you're smart, but because of the anointing on your life. And because of that anointing, God says, I put you in this position of purpose so that your life, your living, your words, whatever I've given you, your gifts can make them say, what must I do to be saved? This is important. This is important. Anyway, guys, you're not listening. The value of diligence. When you read inside of Ecclesiastes, we're talking about the basic principles of stewardship. We go into detail, but God said, I need to give y'all some milk first because some of y'all ain't ready for the steak. When my baby was little, I couldn't give her a steak. I had to pre-chew it and everything. No, because she could choke on it. It's the same way with the word of God. If I give it to you too fast, too soon, you'll choke on it. Won't understand it. And right now, I need to give you the word of God, the basic principles on stewardship. God gave us a a scripture and that scripture says, listen what it says. That scripture says, Proverbs 13, 22. Let's go there. Always go to the word of God. Always go to the word of God. Proverbs 13, 22. Proverbs is is, is in front of Ecclesiastes. You ain't got to go too far. Proverbs 13, 22. Now read from the NIV version. A good person leaves an inheritance for their children's children. A good person, an honorable person, a righteous person. The first part of the proverb says a good person. That means that you got to be in position with God. So I'm going to give you the basics. Of stewardship. You need to be in the position with God. Because when you're in the right position with God, that makes you righteous. That makes you holy. That means you, you've got a connection with God. So be, even before you go to God, you need to be in the right position. That makes you a good person, a righteous person, an honorable person. When, you, when you're in the right position with God, hallelujah, things start to happen. We, let, let, for instance, let's go to uh, First Chronicles 4. In nine, Jabez, the Bible says Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. So Jabez was in the position. So when I look back, that's why I tell you precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little. You want to get an understanding of the basic principles of stewardship. You got to know when God tells you to move, I'm giving you the word Proverbs 13, 22. After you go for Proverbs 13, 22, the first part that God is revealing is you need to be in a position of purpose. You need to be in that position with God. And I went to Jabez to show you because the Bible says Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. He was in a, a position. And because he was in a position, he, listen, 
Jabez cried out to God. I'm in verse 10. Jabez cried out to God. I'm in 1 Chronicles 4 and 10. I started in Proverbs 13, 22. The first part says a good person, giving you an example of scripture of a good person and what happens when you're in a position with God, what access you have when you're in a position with God. You need to get in position this morning and you can't do anything until you get in position with God. That's why I told you when I first started on an individual basis, you need to get your house in order. Get your house in order, do it today. Get your house in order, do it right away. You've got to be ready. So a good person leaves an inheritance. A good person. Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. The Bible didn't tell us how more honorable he was, but it tells us he was honorable. He goes on to say in verse 10, Jabez cried out to the God of Israel, which means he knew God. Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I'll be free from pain. And God granted his request. Last time we heard about Jabez. There are books that came out and, 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 and uh, conferences that were held. There are prayers and fasts. But I'm telling you, Jabez was honorable. Based on Proverbs 13, 22, a good person, an honorable person. Leaves an inheritance for their children's children. The second part is vision. You've got to see the end result expectations. You've got to see yourself driving that new car. You've got to see yourself married to that woman. You've got to see yourself working that new job. You've got to see yourself healed, delivered. But if you don't see the end result, you will never get there. The Ford, Henry Ford was a Christian, but here's what he said. One of the greatest quotes of our time and the time before us. He said, if you think that you can, or if you think that you can't, you're right. So a good person, I'm in position, leaves an inheritance for their children's children. I can see the vision. I can see the end result expectations. Hebrews 11 and 1. you got to have vision. You've got to see what God is showing you. Moses could not go into the promised land. So God took him to the top and said, listen, see what I'm giving your people. See what I'm giving your, the, the offspring of you. See what your people are going to inherit. Hallelujah. You've got to see the end result. The Bible tells us, speak those things as though they were. Hallelujah. Even though they haven't manifested yet. Hebrews 11 and 1. This isn't the definition of faith. This is what faith is. This is what faith does. Y'all better talk to me. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and the assurance about what we do not see. A good person, I'm in position, got a relationship with God, leaves an inheritance for their children's children. I got the vision. Now faith is the confidence in what we hope for and the assurance about what we do not see. Some of y'all know the King James Version of, of Hebrews 11. Well, now faith is the evidence of things. Hallelujah. I got to get King James Version because I didn't memorize it. Hallelujah. The King James Version. Now faith. Hallelujah. But we're talking about Proverbs 13, 22. That's where we're starting from. But I'm going to give you the King James Version because it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. That's the King James Version. I've been reading from the NIV um, because I want to help people that are not in church, people that don't understand scripture, babies in the word, those that are just getting faith-based principles. I want them to get an understanding. God tells us in all we do get an understanding. I know I still be talking about the stock market, but let me tell you something. God already got that. God already got that. You better believe, man. Listen, the Nikkei, the Nikkei average or Nikkei average, I don't even know how they pronounce it. It's the Japanese stock market. It already hit 39,000. The, the, the Dow Jones hit 39. It touched 39,000. It's in an area it's never been in before. They're wondering why this company, NVIDIA, is now richer than most of the big of the, of the seven, the, the magnificent seven. They don't even know. They have explanation for it. It's God working through his people. God promised us seven years of prosperity. You you ain't seen nothing yet. You ain't seen nothing yet. Back to Proverbs 13, 22. A good person. I'm in a position. I'm talking to God. Got a relationship with God. Leaves an inheritance for their children's children. 
I got the faith. I see the end result expectation. Even though I ain't married, I see the end result expectation. Even though I don't have kids, I see the end result expectation. Even though I ain't got grandkids, I see the end result expectation. When you can see it, God's going to manifest it. Somebody got to stand up and break the curse. Somebody got to des the des desire to stop the madness in your family. So right now, God has got you listening to me. The Bible says faith, 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 faith. We're in second part of the, of the three part revelation. It's in Proverbs 13, 22. The first part of the revelation is a good person. That means you need to be in position, position of purpose, get in position, get in position. Be in. The second part of the three part revelation found in Proverbs 13, 22 is faith, 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 faith. The Bible says faith come by hearing. Are you listening? Hearing by the word of God. Are you reading? How can they hear without a preacher? Am I preaching? Y'all better talk to me. Faith, faith, faith. Even when it says that we stay in Hebrews 11 and 1, that's called the faith chapter. We're going to go to Hebrews 11 and 6 because I need you to understand what God is doing. Watch this. And without faith, we're still in the second part of the revelation. There's a three-part revelation in Proverbs 13, 22. The first part of the revelation is position. We sent you to uh, 1 Chronicles 4, 9, and 10, talking about Jabez, because God shows you when you're in position what you can ask for, what you have access to. The second part was faith. Then we took you to Hebrews 11 and 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Now we're in Hebrews 11 and 6. And without faith, it's impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him, him being God, must believe that he exists. You've got to believe. You've got to see. You've got to understand. Even though I've never seen him, met him, I never had that uh, a road to Damascus experience that Paul had. But glory be unto your name, God. I'm excited because I'm walking by faith and not by sight. The Bible even says, if you're ready to give your life to Christ right now, right now, right now, we can stop. Because it says, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, hallelujah, you too are saved. Does it matter? That's the glory of this. My job is to teach you how to implement this word into your daily activities so life gets better for you. It's supposed to be better. He would not give us Proverbs 13, 22. A good person, which means I'm in position. Number one revelation. Leaves an inheritance for their children's children. Y'all better talk to me. That's the faith part. Without faith, it's impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Earnestly seek him. Oh, my God. And so the last part, the third revelation, it comes out of Proverbs 13, 22. But a sinner's wealth is stored up for the righteous. Now that's the assignment. Hallelujah. That's the assignment. So there's a three, there's this three revelations that God tells us in the scripture lesson, Proverbs 13, 22. We're talking about financial stewardship. We're talking about a financial wellness journey for you to be better stewards of God's time. 24 hours in a day. Did you give him two hours and 40 minutes? Did you tithe your time? How to be a better steward of God's word. Who did you share the word with today? Is your life the word? Are you living the word? The Bible says that God, that Christ came in and he was the word. He lives the word. Let's go to the scripture because you can live the word too. Y'all better talk to me. It is not always what you say that draws people to Christ. It's how you live when they know something's going on. Hallelujah. But you still smile and they know something going on. Hallelujah. But you still moving and you still praising God when they know something's going on. Hallelujah. How do you stay excited? God says in the beginning. I'm in John 1, 1. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that light was the light of all mankind. That light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Y'all better talk to me. Glory be unto your name, God. Are you living a life that's going to draw somebody to Christ? Or are you moaning and groaning? See, the world don't even know the difference between the church folk and the city folk. Y'all look just like us. That's what the world's saying. God says, not anymore. Not anymore. Not anymore. Hallelujah. My people are going to shine because we're supposed to be peculiar people. Somebody the other day called me strange. You're a strange fella, Harold. I said, thank you very much. Hallelujah. You're a strange fella, but I'm going to start listening to you. People are going to start nicking 
Nicodemus and me. You know what that means? They start messaging me behind the scenes. On, on Facebook, they calling me crazy. On, on Reddit, they saying, man, how are you going to put God into the, into the stock market? I said, how are you not going to put God into something you do every day? Y'all better talk to me. Here's your opportunity wherever you are. That's your position of purpose. To teach God's word. To show God's word. To live God's word. My job is to show you how to take the word, implement it into your daily activities so that then you begin to look, act, and respond like the people of the Bible. God says that we're the head, not the tail. We're lenders and not borrowers. And most of y'all are still borrowing money. Y'all don't want to talk to me. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Hey, it's Harold Dillon Jr., the internet guy from Investment Group Partners. If you're just now joining us, this is the 730 drop. We're in the Thanksgiving Thursday. Thanksgiving Thursday! Hallelujah! Today's word is walking in your authority. Know your calling. Walking in your authority, know your calling. I've given you scripture. I gave you Luke 10, 19. Behold, I've given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall hurt you. Mark 3, 14 and 15. He appointed the 12 to who he named apostles. He wanted them to be continually at his side as his friends and so that he could send them out to preach and have authority to heal the sick and cast out demons. Jesus called his disciples to spend time with him and to send them out to preach and have authority to cast out demons. In our day, our dispensation, we understand the concept of preaching. We speak with our mouths and people listen with their ears. It's a visual and an oral. We understand that these things as people who live in a physical world, that's the physical part of what we do. But what, what, excuse me, what do we do through with the authority that we have been given in the spiritual realm? What do we do though that with the through the authority we have in the spiritual realm? That's what I'm asking. That's the question. Do you operate in the spiritual realm or only in the physical realm? Romans 13, 1. Let every person be subject to governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and those that exist have been instituted by God. Everything. Everybody doesn't matter whether you think they're good, bad or indifferent. Ain't my job to separate the wheat from the tear. Not my job. God says I put them in place because whatever the end result is for God, I just want to be part of the plan. You're not going to tell me God didn't put Dalton Thomas in place, one of the apostles. You're not going to tell me that Judas was not in place to do what he wanted to do, one of the apostles. He chose them himself. So you have to know, here's what God is calling me to do. Stop stop uh, bad-mouthing people and say, God, what do you want me to do? <laughs> Hallelujah! What's my position of purpose? What time is it? It's 8.09, guys. Listen, this is the 7.30 drop. This only lasts 30 minutes. We're going to come back throughout the afternoon. Listen, the markets are doing awesome on today. There's a comeback. They don't know why NVIDIA is doing what it's doing. They don't know why the Nikkei average, which is the Japanese stock market, did what it did. They don't know why the Dow Jones is going to break records today and tomorrow. They don't know. But I know that God is blessing us, and he's continually to watch over us because we're in a, a, a position a purpose, and we're walking in the obedience of God. Hey, today is Thanksgiving Thursday. Today's word is walk in your authority. Good morning.